To make this fluffy and toasty garlic rosemary sourdough bread, here's what you gotta do. First, you gotta make some roasted garlic. Technically, I'm making garlic confit, which is garlic cooked low and slow in olive oil, and it's really roasty and delicious. With this method, I'm gonna have some nice soft garlic cloves to include in this bread, as well as a garlic infused olive oil, which I'm gonna use in the bread as well. If you don't wanna do this method, you could just use roasted garlic and regular olive oil. But I'm putting this at a 300 degree Fahrenheit oven, and I'm gonna cook it for about two and a half hours. During that time, you'll see the oil start to bubble like this, and the garlic cloves are slowly gonna turn brown the longer it cooks. Go ahead and continue until it's nice and toasty brown like this, and pull the garlic out once they're the color you want, basically. I'd recommend a little bit less brown than this. These are a little over brown. The garlic cloves should be nice, soft, and smushable like this, and you'll have a nice garlic-infused olive oil to include in your bread. Just reserve this garlic and oil mixture in the refrigerator until you're ready to make your dough. To make the dough, add 300 grams of water to a mixing bowl, followed by 10 grams of salt. I'm using kosher salt here, as I usually do, but any regular salt is fine. Then 100 grams of sourdough starter that's active and fed. I fed this the night before, and it was ready in the morning. So 100 grams of starter. Then give all of that a stir into the water to form a nice milky mixture like this. Makes it easier to incorporate the flour. And then add 450 grams of bread flour. I use King Arthur brand usually, but any standard bread flour that you want to use is fine. Go ahead and mix all of that together. You're going to get a shaggy dough at this point that doesn't quite hold together, but give it time and we're going to give it a little bit of work and it's going to come together beautifully. Once your dough looks like this, you're going to get 25 grams of olive oil or that garlic oil that you made before and add that directly to your dough. This 25 grams of oil is not only going to give the dough awesome garlicky flavor, but it's going to make the dough come together really silky smooth and it's going to be really nice to work with. So just keep mixing it with a spoon or squeeze the oil in with your hands until your dough comes together, but it's going to have some oily patches. That's totally fine. Those patches will disappear when you do stretch and folds in the next step. When your dough looks like this, go ahead and cover it up and just let it rest on the counter at room temperature for about 30 minutes. This will make the dough hold together a lot better before you get to the first set of stretch and folds. So a half hour later, uncover the dough and you're just gonna fold this like I've done before in other videos. Just take an edge of the dough, pull it up. It's really stretchy as you can see and fold it over the dough. Then take the next edge, pull it up and fold it over the center. This is a variation of kneading, or it's an alternative to kneading. I'm gonna go around the bowl 30 times. I counted it exactly on this round. I went around the bowl, stretching and folding 30 times until the dough was really smooth. You can do 20, 30 times, whatever you wanna do. Just go with the flow and respond to the feel of the dough. After 30 stretch and folds, you can see that my dough is really soft and smooth, silky, and really easy to handle. That's gonna make it easy to incorporate some garlic and rosemary into the dough during the next set of stretch and folds. So cover up the dough and let it rest for another 30 minutes. A half hour later, go ahead and get your garlic. If it's in oil like mine is, you're gonna to wanna to pat it dry. You don't want it to be slippery when you're putting it in your dough. It'll just be easier to handle if it's dry. So pat the 100 grams of garlic cloves dry with a paper towel, as dry as you can. If there's a little oil on it, it's fine. Not really a big deal, but drier is better. Then this is an optional step, but I'm gonna go ahead and smush my cloves of garlic with a fork. I don't really wanna smush them into a complete paste, but I want them somewhere in between a complete clove of garlic and a garlic paste, just somewhere in between there. And if you happen to have any garlic cloves in there that are hard and not easy to smush, go ahead and remove those because those aren't gonna be fun to eat in your bread. With your garlic ready, go ahead and uncover your dough and place half of the garlic cloves right on top of the dough. So it's about 50 grams of roasted garlic cloves and you're gonna add the rosemary in a second, but just spread the garlic around so it's basically even, and then sprinkle some dried garlic on top. I'm not even gonna tell you how many grams this is because I don't know. I just gave it a few shakes, and then I pressed everything down into the dough so it would stick a little bit, and then I'm gonna give this four stretch and folds just to make the cloves of garlic and rosemary disappear inside the dough. So grab one edge of the dough and fold it over the top and press down firmly, Grab the next edge about a 90 degree turn, pull it up and fold it over. Same thing with the next edge of dough, pull it up and fold it over. And then there's one corner left, so grab that edge of dough, stretch it up and fold it over. And now all of those garlic cloves are hidden inside of the dough as well as the dried rosemary. And the ball of dough is nice and smooth as you can see and no garlic is escaping from the dough. 
Send the dough back into the bowl and cover it up and you're gonna let it rest for another half hour and you'll do your last set of stretch and folds. So 30 minutes later, uncover the dough and place the remaining garlic cloves on top of the dough. You're gonna press those down into the dough to stick with your fingertips a little bit. And then give the top of the dough a couple of shakes of dried rosemary. A gram is probably the most I would say this is, but not everything has to be precise. Something like this is easy to just eyeball. So go ahead and press that down so it sticks. And then four more stretch and folds. Stretch up, fold it over, stretch the next edge and fold that over as well. And then fold and fold and fold. At this point, you can flip your dough out so it's smooth side up and seam side down onto the counter and just give it a couple of cup and pulls like this to smooth it out into a ball. And you'll start to see those cloves of garlic kind of try to break their way through. You can see how they're distributed in layers throughout the dough and some are trying to break through the top. But we wanna keep those in there, obviously. You can let your dough bulk ferment in the same mixing bowl where you mixed it, or you can move it to an oiled glass container like this one. I like to do it so I can see through the sides and see how much my dough is right and I'm gonna let this rise until it's about doubled in size. It took about five hours for me, but it could be longer or shorter for you. It totally depends. When it's doubled in size like this, it's done with its first rise or the bulk fermentation and go ahead and bring it out of the bowl. Just carefully put it onto the counter. You don't need flour, but sometimes flour helps. If you're doing it without flour, just put it seam side down. Cup and pull the dough like this with your hands to form a nice tight ball and slap away any really big bubbles that form that's completely fine. This is the pre-shape step where you're forming a ball. Later, I'm gonna shape this as an oval to fit my banneton basket but let this rest for a half hour at room temperature and it's gonna pancake out a little bit. Add some flour to the top. Now it's time to give it its final shape as an oval. So flip over the dough. So flour side is against the counter and sticky side is facing up. And then just carefully shape this into a square and take one side of the square, pull it up and fold it over the middle. I like to say take one third of the dough, fold it over the middle third, then take the other third of the dough, on the other side and fold it over to meet in the middle as well and just kind of press that seam down. Then take the end of the dough that's farthest away from you and roll it into a cylinder shape towards yourself. Just roll it tucking and rolling like this until you have a tight cylinder of dough. There's gonna be surface tension across the top that's gonna to give the dough a nice oval shape when you bake it. Take the ends if you wanna make them a little bit prettier than they are right now. Take that flap and fold it underneath and round it out a little bit. I do that on both sides. Then once you've got your dough shaped like this, you can go ahead and flip it upside down so the seam side is facing up and put it into a nicely floured banneton basket. I do like to use rice flour for my basket, but you can use bread flour too. Now it's time for the second rise or the proofing stage. I usually do this in the fridge overnight in a cold environment, but today I'm dusting the top with flour, covering it up, and I'm gonna let it proof at room temperature for just two hours. That should be plenty of time. Two hours later, I've got my oven preheated to 500 degrees Fahrenheit and the dough is ready to bake. So I'm gonna get a piece of parchment paper that's a little bit bigger than the dough and I'm gonna flip it out carefully onto that parchment paper. Now it's time to score the dough. I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a different score than I usually do. I usually do one long slash with the razor blade, but today I'm gonna to do an S-shaped pattern, starting with one half of an S shape on this side and then I'm gonna flip the dough around and do another half of an S and it's gonna form an S in the middle. We'll see how this turns out after I bake it. The oven has been preheating to 500 degrees Fahrenheit for a half hour with my Dutch oven or Challenger bread pan inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on and bake this for 20 minutes at 500 degrees Fahrenheit. After you bake yours for 20 minutes, go ahead and remove the lid and reveal the oven spring as well as release that steam. Mine puffed up nice and tall, which is a little bit taller than I usually get, probably because of this unique scoring pattern that I'm not used to doing. I'm gonna bake this for another 15 minutes at 500 degrees with the lid off and I end up with a bread that looks something like this. Hopefully yours looks similar to mine, but if it's too dark, go ahead and just reduce the time that you're baking it with the lid off. 12 minutes instead of 15 is completely fine. Let it cool for at least an hour before you slice in, and then your bread should hopefully look something like this. It'll have some pockets of roasted garlic with rosemary kind of swirled throughout the dough, and sometimes you'll get little chunks of those garlic cloves. Depending on which slice, you might have more garlic than others. You see this slice just has a few, 
This one has a few more, but because of that garlic infused oil, the flavor of roasted garlic is all the way throughout this dough, no matter which slice you're eating. This is perfect to eat plain, but of course, enjoy the bread however you want to, even if that means dipping it straight into a pot of bubbling beef bourguignon. I don't have this recipe to share with you today, but I do have 18 sourdough bread recipes to share with you in my ebook, No Nonsense Sourdough. It's 18 straightforward sourdough bread recipes with no unnecessary steps and no complicated terminology. Go ahead and go to grantbakes.com ebook for the recipes.